How we live in and organize our cities is going to be critical to a successful future. Ken Yang, an architect and ecologist, has big ideas on how skyscrapers of the future might look. I believe that biology is the biggest source of ideas, the biggest source of invention. You know, nobody can invent better than nature. And so if you like nature, it's my biggest source of inspiration. My contention is that 80% of the impact of the building is caused by its design. If we can anticipate the impact at the design stage, we can reduce the, the impact from 80% to, you know, if we can, minimal. I think it's the single most pressing issue that all designers must address today. Otherwise, this millennium will be our last. The ecologist has a much more comprehensive and holistic view of the world. Uh, we're looking at the natural environment as well as the human built environment and the connectivity between the two. That means when we design a building, we're not looking at it as an object, but we're looking at it and its relationship with the natural environment. I call this process of imitation eco-mimesis, imitating the processes in nature. Another aspect that we should imitate is that in nature, the only source of energy is from the sun. Everything comes from the sun through the process of photosynthesis. Whereas now, our source of energy is from fossil fuels, so until we are able to, to operate and run by imitating photosynthesis, it will be a long while before we can have a truly ecological system. In the Edith Tower, what we're trying to do is to interpret as many of our ecological ideas as possible into this single building project. First thing we did was to try and balance the inorganic mass of the tower with more organic mass, which means bringing vegetation and landscaping into the building. We wanted it to be low energy, so we had photovoltaics on its facades, particularly facing the east and west side, and on its roof, so that in this way we would have its own energy source. So we had sun shades, which were scallop shaped, so that we could collect rainwater. And then the building has its own sort of water filtration system, so the water is recycled within the building, and then the sewage are recycled. And so in many ways, it is, if you like, a human-made ecosystem, but in a tower form. Within the next five to ten years, we'll see a lot more green buildings being built. Not just buildings, but green cities, green environment, green master plans, green products, green transportation. Reduced use of cars and, and better use of public transportation affects the planning of cities. And so planners all over the world are aware of this, but some are in a better position to implement it than others. I believe that if we are committed towards it and that we continue to educate people and get the whole world community to implement green features and aspects, not just in their lifestyles, but in their businesses, in their industries, then we're heading towards a green future. So my dream you know, for the future is that it's a green dream, but as you know, Kermit the Frog says, it's not easy being green but we should try and make it as green as possible. And I'm very optimistic.